This is part 3 of the 3D printer rack build series. In the previous video, we have already completed assembling the frame and the acrylic paneling. And if you are new to my channel, you might want to watch part 1 and part 2 first. Let's continue from where we left off and finish up this project. There are so many parts I had to design for this project. Without 3D printing capabilities, I won't be able to create this product. And for the user to conduct regular maintenance easily, a wide range of magnetic methods were applied in every part of the build. One of the key objective for this project is to expel printing fumes effectively. Having so many printers running at the same time simply means, the air in the room is not breathable. Therefore, what you see now is several methods to guide the fumes out, through the window. This part is to be mounted at the back of the acrylic panel. All the magnets will stay in place, with just a dab of super glue on the other side. Lock nuts have to be carefully back pulled into the tight fitting holes. And by using this huge M3 washer, nothing is damaged through the process. Next, for the exhaust fans, they will break down over time, and replacements will always be necessary. That is why I designed a magnetic plate to hold the fan. This plate will be secured to the back panel as well. All these ideas originated from my prior video, where I made my first exhaust system. But this will be the start of many other products for the future, and the designs are already on the way. Make sure to subscribe now and hit the notification bell to catch all the videos in time. All the fans will receive heat set inserts, so that there is a convenient mounting solution. We just need to ensure that the heat set inserts are flush to the mounting surface. The fan and the plate will now become one single unit. By doing this, we can remove and replace the fan magnetically, which makes maintenance much easier. In all my projects involving fans, magnetic solutions were used to simplify assembly and maintenance. And this is how easy it is to mount a fan now. It is now time to install some lights in the chamber. In order to hold the LED strips, I had to come up with this custom design. These parts will be mounted onto the 2020 profiles within the chamber, completely hidden from view. And due to the size limitations of my printer, I had to design it into two separate parts. For the wiring, my intention is to completely run them inside the extrusions neatly, and this has been one of the most challenging issues. This is a drilling jig that I will need, just for this job. It will accurately find the locating holes that I need to drill. Two holes will have to be made here, to run the wires out. The wires to the LED and the fans will pass through these holes. All the electronics will eventually be mounted at the back of the rack. This drilling job could be done way beforehand, if I thought of it first. But nevertheless, I still found a workaround solution for all the problems so far. Using these slot covers, I can easily conceal all the wires within the extrusion, and still make future maintenance and upgrades possible. The chamber still remains neat and tidy after this.
Another jig is now printed to drill some remaining holes. Using this next part, we can guide the printing fumes upwards, leading to the master exhaust box. One of my frequent mistake, is getting the magnet polarity wrong. Therefore I had to print this blue magnet holder, to help me figure out the correct way. In total, there are more than 300 magnets used in this project, and it is all in multiples of 8. Each mistake will cost 8 magnets, and therefore, this process has to be keenly observed. And now, this section is done. Let's do a dry assembly. Another way to guarantee the right polarity, is to mark the magnets. In this way, we can visually tell the correct way up. To get the exact fitting size of these printed holes, a lot of experimenting was done. I made sure to arrive at a tight fit. The diameter within the 3D model ended up being 6.06 mm, with zero tweaking to the slicer. Despite that, super glue is still required because the heat from the fumes will cause the holes to expand, and the magnets to come off. Glue will do the trick. These two parts will come together to hold a fan, for the second option for exhausting printing fumes. Here is another method to back pull lock nuts, but way faster. Let's now head on to produce the master exhaust box. This is a 9 hours print, and sad to say, I could not get it right on the first try. I designed a spine within the box to support the top of the box, and that is a success. But the top of the circles turned out fray. I had to toss it, and redesign it again, suitable for printing. I added a teardrop design to the top of the circle, and it came out much better. With that, we can now complete the master exhaust box, and hook up all the tubes. There will be 6 exhaust inlets, to prepare for 6 printers. Polarity, again, is critical here. This part uses the most magnets. Get one wrong, and we toss another printed box into the bin. I've used many different fans, and most of them sound like jet turbines. Noctua fans are the best. It is the most silent fan I own. This funnel will pull the fumes out of the box and out of the window. This setup is also made magnetic, so it can easily be disconnected whenever I move the rack for maintenance. And now, I think we are quite ready for a dry assembly again. The missing parts are now the lids, which I wish to add my logo to it, using two colors to print it. After many tries, I managed to get it right. These lids will close off the various exhaust inlets when not in use. After printing the lids in contrasting colors, we should now have most of the parts required for assembly. This is the first option for exhausting the enclosure section. I made sure to design this rack with two different options to provide the removal of fumes. In any case, either one option will be covered with a lid. If you are building one for yourself, make sure to first decide which exhaust option you wish to use. I call this the boot. 
Because of how the magnets were laid, it can be placed in various orientations. And that will decide how neat or messy your hoses will be. And if you choose not to use this option, you can easily cover it up with a magnetic lid. In order to guide the fumes up, we are going to need these magnetic funnels. These funnels undergone several redesigns, and this is the final version. In this version, the magnets are now exposed, from the top, and there is no way for the magnets to fall out due to heat. This is the second option to exhaust the fumes from the chamber, which is a more straightforward method. Next, to hold the exhaust box in place, we will need this tiny clip. For printability, I needed to bridge one layer across, which can be easily poked through to make the hole. I learned this from Rat Rig, a fantastic team of geniuses. I love Rat Rig as much as I love Vorin. And by using an M5 tapping bit, we now have an M5 hole to fasten to. The hole in the middle is used to find the center of the rack, by matching it to the hole on the extrusion. For this master exhaust box, I do not wish to commit to a permanent mounting method, because I have too many ideas in my head to upgrade it in the future. Therefore, some double-sided tape will hold it down for now. But even before taping it down, I need to ensure square first. The remaining funnels will be done now. These will guide the printing fumes to the master exhaust box. And just by simply snapping them on, we have completed the connection to the top. Over here, we will need to resize the length of the exhaust hose. It is as simple as cutting it through this way. After which, no clamps will be required. It is already designed as a tight fit, and the heat coming through later on will weld the connection together. Right now, you get to see how we can use the boot to lay in different orientations. And for the exhaust system for my Vorin 2.4 printers, I am already designing a version 2, to have the exhaust direction pointing upwards. For now, we shall install this way temporarily, while I complete the design and printing. This power supply will be dedicated just for the LED lights and master fan. The cables will be guided into the slots of the extrusion, to arrive at the electronics at the back of the structure. And this wires will sit in a dedicated holder, just for the master fan. Most of the hardware, if not all, will already be up by now. The wiring will consist of a main switch, to control the LED lights and the master exhaust fan. M3 heatsets were inserted into the printed part. This box will house all the messy cable connections and keep all wires out of sight. For the switches, I am short of one piece, therefore we will need to wait for part 4 to see the project completion. Two switches are for controlling the LED lights to the enclosure chamber. 
and another switch will power on the master fan to push printing fumes out of the window. Every single piece of hardware in this project has been carefully designed and thought through. The purpose of this rack has been originally meant to house multiple printers and to vent printing fumes out of the room effectively. And up till now, the project stayed on course perfectly true. And with this switch box assembled, we have installed all the hardware onto the structure. In part 4 of this build, we will finish up the wiring and the entire rack will be in full operation. And if you missed the previous videos, you may watch these two videos of how the whole project came together so far. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in part 4 very soon.